Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Berlin and to the very first Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions live stream on YouTube. We're incredibly excited. This is our first time and everything <laughs> could be going wrong. So if you're watching and you can't hear us, you can't see us, you don't like us, we need to shut up, then post in the chat board and we'll do all of those things. You're probably wondering who I am, but that's not important. This guy is the important one. You know him. It's Chris from Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. My name's Stephen. I'm his brother and co-presenter. I don't know about spreadsheets, but he does. So I'm going to be your voice. I'm going to be fielding your questions. But first of all, Chris, how are you doing? How's your day? Why are we here? Oh, what's, what's going on? Steve, thank you so much. <laughs> Pleasure. Well, first, I want to say thank you to... We've got a few people tuning in. We have. We've got... Uh, yeah, so we have. first, you know, channel is all about the viewers. So thank you people who are tuning into this for our little project people tuning in means a lot to us so thanks very much and don't be shy definitely put a, a comment you, you, you can see the chat there on the right i think stick um, a comment in there any excel questions but to be honest it doesn't have to be about, about excel if you want to know anything about the, else about the channel about our little story here which we might tell you a little bit about on the stream uh, stick stick it there um, in the chat so why are we here in Berlin and why am I with this guy, I suppose, well, Steve, my brother. Um, so we came up with the idea for Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions, certainly for the YouTube channel together. And Berlin, Berlin's quite a special place, um, certainly in the story of the company, because this is where it all started. And if you look on the YouTube channel, if you go right to the old videos and then keep going, then keep going some more to possibly the first video on the channel. It was filmed right here in Berlin and it's a really cheesy video of me talking to me and the amount of time we spent trying to get that video right. How many takes did we do trying to get that video right? But maybe you can find it, Stephen, and just put a link to the video I'll see what I can do yeah we thought it would become a future classic maybe maybe it still will yeah I think it's got 400 views or something but anyway but yeah my brother's here Steve's here working yeah Berlin. I'm usually based in Nottingham uh, but when we're working together making videos don't make all of the videos together we make a lot of the videos together uh, we work out out here in Berlin yeah that's right and um I use a lot of the stuff that Chris has made in my work and my job, but we'll, we'll get all to that stuff later. We've got some questions in the live chat already. And, and, and basically, we should say, folks, that we don't really know what's going to happen tonight. We've got a few yeah. people watching, which is the best thing ever. We thought no one would watch, so thank you. And we got yeah. some questions. So the idea is you post a question, I ask it to Chris, and Chris talks about it. We're going to split the screen. You can see yeah. his Excel. And let's go straight to the first question from Moro, who's been waiting um, right. on the stream. Shouts, man. Thanks, thanks for. He says, "Okay, Chris, we're going to go straight to you now." Okay. Is it possible to display the fields of an Excel row directly on a form within the same Excel sheet? Okay. No, I don't know what a lot of that means. <laughs> I got to say, but I think Moro knows, and maybe you know. So, can you get into that? Okay, I'll try to get so. So, Moro, firstly, thank you because you've left a lot of positive feedback on the channel, and I think you left a Facebook review as well. We appreciate that. I mean, knocking out these videos takes a lot of time and effort and love the positive feedback. So thank you. So you're talking about a form. So firstly, we have to clarify what kind of form you're talking about. I think you're talking about a user form in Excel. So we can use Excel VBA, mm -hmm. the coding language to create forms, uh, which are not spreadsheets. But if you think about when you have to fill out a form on a website, uh, a contact, uh, form, you know, leave, leave, you know, you want to contact somebody via a website, you have to fill out a form. We can produce that kind of form in Excel. We, and the technical name is a user form. So I think Mauro is talking about that and he's talking about trying to get some information from the spreadsheet, from some rows in the spreadsheet into a user form. I believe uh, this is what Mauro is saying. So if I've incorrectly interpreted your question, Mara, and you should definitely give us some feedback in, in the chat. If I have understood your question, then this is perfectly possible. You're talking about getting some data from a spreadsheet into a user form, and you might be doing something like updating a database. Maybe you have a database and uh, you want to get someone's details out of the database quickly and display them in a form. This is a very common usage. 
uh, for user forms, database management. That would involve getting the data from a row in the spreadsheet into a user form. This is perfectly possible using VBA. Now, I would suggest going to our user forms for beginner series, which you may, you may have worked through. I think you've left some comments on that already, but using the techniques there. Um, so you're gonna need some VBA. You're gonna have to create some interactions between the sheets um, and the user form, which can be difficult, but once you've got it, um, you should be able to make progress there. So I'd suggest going back to that series. So Excel user forms for beginners, uh, go back to that series and go through the techniques and yep, let us know how you get on, Mara. Once again, thank you for supporting the channel. Makes a big difference uh, when we're knocking out the content. Awesome, first question done. And you know, if we answer these questions wrong, or you're like, guys, that's not what I meant, then just hit yeah. us up in the chat and we'll get onto it. Absolutely. We have another question, which is um, from uh, Alex. Alex, um, thank you for tuning in, Alex. No, oh, no, no, it's not from Alex. So, okay. hi, Alex is tuning in. What's up, Alex? Andrew Scoynes has a question. Andrew, okay. He says, is it possible, um, for example, to use the cells A2 to C2 as a table name with VBA? Okay, a table name in VBA. I think you're talking, Andrew, I think you're talking about a named range. So, when we're in VBA, uh, we can create custom uh, custom names for ranges. So, Steve, you know, in, in a spreadsheet, you've got A1, A2, A3, blah, blah, blah. I know that. That's yeah. about as much as I know about spreadsheets. <laughs> but continue. But, but we can build on that. We can. Yeah. We need to. But if you have a certain range in a spreadsheet that you, you know, you want to give an informative name. So rather than think having to remember cell G47, we could rename that cell. So we could give it the name... Uh, you know, you're working in an education environment, so it might be student name. Uh, so if the student name data is going in that cell, we can rename the cell, give it the name student name, uh, give it the name student name, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So this, this is called a named range. Okay. And this is useful when we're using VBA, because when we're in the VBA editor, we can just use the named range rather than having to think, oh, what was that cell reference? Mm -hmm. Was it A3? Was it G3? Blah, blah, blah. So I think... And who is it again with this it's question? Andrew. Andrew, I think you're talking about named ranges and the specific issue you're talking about is using a reserved name as a named range. This is what I think you're talking about. This is a, this is a very common problem. So Excel, we're talking about named ranges, but there's a limit to, um, well, not just with named ranges, but when, for example, we're creating a, a, a routine or a short program in VBA, you know, we call them subroutines, they're just short computer programs. We give those a name, okay? And just like when we name a cell, we try to give it an informative name. So the name of the subroutine should describe what the program does. So, okay. so, so that when we're looking through the code, we can easily understand that. But there's a limit to the range, to, to the names we can use. Excel reserves certain words for its own use. Obviously, I can see. Okay. So, for example, if you try to call a macro, a subroutine, you know, A1 or A2, then this might cause a problem with Excel because Excel has reserved... Will it, warn, will it warn you of that? It would warn you. It, okay. it, would create, it would create some kind of error, but sometimes the error messages are not informative. So we okay. can't always know straight away from the error message what is actually going on. Okay. So that's something else I suggest you look at, um, Andrew, and... Some good coding practice is to try to use informative names when, when we're naming VBA variables, subroutines, but also to try to avoid um, think row, column, words that you'll typically associate with Excel. Excel reserves those for, for its own And that's kind of, kind of annoying because that's the first thing I would think of to call these things. Exactly. Exactly. That's good I to know. Remember then. Yeah. when I was first getting into code when I was doing my master's back in 2009, I created a, 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 a subroutine, so a program yeah. in VBA. I called it column because it was manipulating the column. Manipulating a column. You and can't be blamed, I, man. I, I understand. Message. Yeah. So I think that's what you're getting at, Andrew. If it's not, jump into the chat, you know, and we're very, very happy to talk further. 
Okay, before we take the next question, um, a couple of things. It's Friday night here in Berlin, which means we got a drinks delivery coming in. Um, yeah. Johanna um, is going to come in any minute. She's uh, another member of the Tiger team. She's going to deliver some drinks, um, and that's a good thing. Friday night in Berlin. Right here, it's um, 9.25 in the evening. But if you're watching in the States, it'll be in the afternoon or in the morning, and it's, uh, it's great to see you as well. Um, also, we're here for a reason. We both got yeah. these, these little wristbands on, if you can see that. Because um, me and Chris are going to run the Berlin Half Marathon on Sunday. But who wants to run a marathon without doing some spreadsheet videos? So we thought we'll do a bit of marathon running and a lot of running. But not till Sunday. So we're, this, is, this, is, this is just relaxing and get, getting psyched up. You were saying, going to be nervous tomorrow night. You know, probably won't be able to relax or sleep. So, you know, why not? Why not get some, get a, get a bit of work in there? Exactly, yeah. exactly. We have um, a question from Jesse. What's up, Jesse? Nice to see you on Jesse, the channel. Thanks for joining us, Jesse. Appreciate um, it. Now, he says, how do columns add up across multiple spreadsheets? And then he says, if I pivot, can I erect across online spreadsheets? Now, okay. Again, the, our, my problem is that I don't know if any of these questions make sense because I can't yeah. tell the difference. But if they make sense to Chris, then it's all okay. good. So the first part, Jesse, and welcome, Jesse. I know you're, you've been a supporter of the company, a supporter of the channel, so welcome. Uh, so we're talking about the first... I'm going to take Jesse's first query here. And Jesse, get back to us in the chat if, if we haven't understood this. But you're talking about um, adding up cells across multiple spreadsheets, so multiple spreadsheet files. Okay, right. so is, is that multiple sheets within one Excel file or multiple? I, We've got to be precise with that. With, with we have, we have. You, well, you have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a spreadsheet file consists of multiple worksheets. Um, people often use the word spreadsheet, uh, but that causes a confusion because sometimes they're talking about worksheets within an individual file. Sometimes they're talking about a whole spreadsheet file. When people say the spreadsheets, they're actually talking about a file that has multiple worksheets. So yeah. spreadsheet is the okay file. Yeah, that's what the, the, <laughs> way, the way to do this is to not use the word spreadsheet. Oh, it's oh. Bit, it's, it's it's a bit like file. Uh, okay. <laughs> Don't talk about. We just say the S word. Okay, yes. fine. So okay, so on the spreadsheets channel, that's the one thing we won't say. But I like it makes sense. So it's a file, yeah. or it's a worksheet. This is a terminology. This is the okay. terminology we should use. But yeah. You know, I'm, yeah, people get confused. I get confused as well. So if we take multiple files, or we could also say workbooks files. I think Jesse is talking about. So, so he's got one file open, yeah. another file yeah. open, and he wants to perform a calculation. So add something up from one file. Right. Uh, to to a cell in another file, perfectly reasonable thing to, to to want to do. A lot of people are trying to do this, and yes, you could do this using a formula, using a simple formula. So open up uh, the file, uh, click on the cell where, where where you want to put the formula in, and then you're going to have to switch to the other file while you're still in formula editing mode, and then find the cell and make make sure the reference is right. Uh, can be a little bit awkward. Uh, Difficult to get right, clicking between the different sheets, clicking between the different files. And, you know, that's possibly something that's something we should write down as a possible topic uh, for tomorrow, Jesse. So, Jesse, thanks for the question. I hope we've cleared things up a little bit about the terminology and maybe a bit of practical advice for you there as well. But one thing we haven't mentioned, Steve, yeah. is we are planning another live stream tomorrow. And the actual purpose of this live stream true. is, okay, so it's a bit of a technical test for us getting everything working, but we're planning uh, another live stream tomorrow. Yes. Pro probably a longer one. Probably so a longer one. We'd love to get a few a few queries in. Um, in fact, you could even send us a file in. If uh, you've got a file that's problematic at the moment, you could send it in, you can email it to info at typosolutions.co.uk. Uh, the information, that information is on the website too. Uh, and then, yeah, shoot it over to us and tomorrow afternoon we'll have a look see if we've got any files and we'll also write down some queries for tonight uh, from from the stream tonight so jesse there is talking about working with multiple sheets multiple worksheets multiple files um that's something that's something we can write down as, as a possible topic for tomorrow okay so what time is this happening tomorrow well i'll tell you 
Um, we're going to start the stream at 6 o'clock in the evening, 1800 hours Central European time. So Berlin time where we are, it'll be at 6 o'clock in the evening. That means 5 o'clock in the evening in London, in Great Britain, over in the States. Um, Eastern time, New York will be 12 noon. And then bright and early Pacific Standard time for those in Los Angeles and all our fans in the Valley, that will be at 9 in the morning. The drinks, the drinks are here. I promise drinks and drinks are here. Thank you, Johanna. Um, and the date, just to, thank you, Johanna. Just to um, confirm the date, the date is tomorrow, which is the 7th of, Saturday the 7th of April 2018. That's when it's happening, that's when it's happening. However, um, we have, we, we have it's time for a couple more questions. Yes, yes, please, please, please. Drinks are coming in thank from you. the side of the screen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Cheers, Steve. Cheers. 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 Oh, cheers, cheers, cheers. Wow, that cheers, was loud cheers. on the mic. Apologies. Ciao, and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, yeah. Mm. Right. We have a couple of questions that have come in that maybe we can chat about. The first one, the first one we have to address because it's from Paul Flint from Notts, from Nottingham, which is where we are Welcome. from, and it's where Tiger is actually based in the UK. Absolutely. Yeah. Berlin is the European headquarters. <laughs> um, so. Paul says um, he's trying to use a power query to get info from soccer stats, but it says table highlighting is disabled. This page is uses Internet Explorer compatibility mode. Is there any way around this? Paul, I've got to be straight with you. Firstly, welcome uh, to the stream. Thank you for the question. I can't help you with this one, I'm afraid. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with power query and getting it to interact with a website. Um, I've got to be straight with you, that's not <laughs> something uh, I've got experience of. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. And how is the weather in Nottingham tonight? I hope it's warming up. It's been such a long winter. It's been absolutely brutal. It's been brutal in Berlin, in the UK as well. There is a light at the end of the tunnel today for this weekend, which is great for us because we're going to run this half marathon. So it's looking a lot brighter today in Berlin. Absolutely. We were out at Tempelhof uh, Field and uh, went and got our little our wristbands and stuff. Yeah. It was all, all very Absolutely. excited for the race. So Paul, thank you for the question. If you want to uh, throw in um, a, a simpler question, if you like, more uh, just within the scope of Excel, uh, VBA, you know, I'm happy to do my best to see if I can answer it. But thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the channel. Totally. So, um, what? Okay, one of the things we're going to talk about tomorrow night as well is the applications that I use that you've developed for me. Of course. Of course. And maybe because the way we were thinking this would go, folks, is um, it's kind of tricky if I'm just dropping your questions on Chris and he may or may not know the answer. In his own videos, he makes the impression that he knows everything, but that's because it's carefully edited. So, so our plan was that we do one discussion of an existing application that Chris has made for me, and then we move on to your questions. And just to whet your appetites for tomorrow night, see if it might be interesting for you, I want to talk about what we're doing tomorrow. Um, my job here in Berlin is a teacher. I teach at a University of Applied Science, and a lot of my classroom management is supported by Excel work done by Chris. I love using it, I use it all the time, but I can't do it myself, and I still can't do it myself, despite the fact that Tiger's been running for quite a few years. Um, and what we want to look at tomorrow night is specifically, well, there's two, there's two options. We can look at a grade management system that Chris developed, or we can look at a classroom, a dynamic classroom grouping system, which Chris yeah. also developed. And we're gonna cover this stuff over the next, well, the next few streams, whatever happens. Yeah. But if that um, sounds interesting for you, if you know someone's a teacher, if you ever do any mm -hmm. teaching, or maybe you do something else that involves organizing people, maybe you're, you run some kind of club, a sports club, maybe your people in your office work in different teams, maybe on a training day, you need a method of recording results so you can put them up um, on a projector, who knows? Maybe you'll, there's, there'll be something there that you can use. And the plan would yeah. be we'd chat about that for 15 minutes maybe tomorrow. Yeah. We'd actually split the screen, you'd be able to see what Chris is doing, and then we take yeah. some of your questions, mm -hmm. okay? So that's how, kind of how it's going to go. Update on the knots weather. Paul says, being okay today, oh, rain, rain, tomorrow. rain tomorrow. I'm sorry, Paul, there man. Never just, mind. Just going back to those, those applications. Um, and yeah, well, sh shall we answer Kelly's, Kelly's question? Uh, the, the, the video tomorrow, assuming it goes well, there's not too many technical difficulties, assuming that we can create some value for the viewers so we can find somebody sends something in, or people are interested, we have a good amount of interaction, we will make it available yeah, on the I, channel 
for you to watch uh, at a later date. So very, very happy for you, for you to tune in. We're talking about Steve's application. So Steve's using uh, spreadsheets for classroom management. We have a bit of an exchange of services, I suppose, because Steve helps me with video production and I help him uh, with spreadsheets uh, for his classroom management. Um, so Steve's told me about this dynamic grouping spreadsheet, but there's another spreadsheet which Steve use, uses for writing student reports. Now, if you're a teacher, you'll be familiar with how much time it takes to write a student report and uh, clicking through Excel as well, you know, that can be a bit of a nightmare. Uh, but if, even if you're not in education, you know, you, you've probably got some kind of repetitive task where you're clicking through sheets, you feel like you have a duplication of effort, so you're putting the same thing in different places. Now, this, the aim of this reporting tool is to try to avoid all that. And what we've got, we've got a nice, simple uh, layout, and Steve can just put in, put in the text there for the student report. It's really awesome. And, and then it does, it does other things, so, so there's some formulae mm. um, that, that are putting some information about data, mm. out of the database about the student, student number and things like that. And then I think the most interesting, but you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, is that um, there's a bit of code in there. You can click a button, click click a button that says create PDF. Yeah. And print that off. creates the report for the student, puts it in a nice PDF file, and allows you to print it off. But it does more than that because it can actually put all of the reports of the whole class mm. into a nicely formatted PDF document that's ready to print. Yeah, ready or a whole print. bunch of PDFs. So I can have a 24 uh, students, I can, with one click, it instantly creates 24 PDFs and saves yeah. them um, in a, a folder. It's, it, it saves me serious time. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Now, yeah. um, Andrew Scoynes has got back, with, uh, got back to us and he's, tr he's very carefully trying to explain what he means here. So let's see, he says, and okay, first of all, let's just go back to Andrew's original question so we know what we're talking about here. Okay, I, I think just looking at that, I think I get what Andrew's talking about. Okay, you and Andrew are on kind of an Excel plane that I'm not, but just for the normal viewers, um, Andrew was asking, can you use a, uh, cells A2 to C2 as a table name with VBA? That was the original question. And now he's refined it. And Chris, over to you. The she name. Okay, so Andrew's saying, yeah. Okay, so in cell, you've got some text in a cell some more text in another cell, you wish to bring that text together, you wish to concatenate that text. Let's do one. Con concatenate. <laughs> concatenate. Is that really, I've never heard yes. that word. You Which heard it here first. Con is bringing two text strings together. Yeah, just, just bringing them together. Concatenating, man. You do have, there is a concatenate formula in Excel. But you can just use cell references with an ampersand and an and sign. An and sign, well, okay. To bring uh, to bring text together. But Andrew is talking about yeah. So that process of concatenation, bring the text together, and then yeah, that text string, we'd say mm -hmm. yeah, because it's uh, the data is in text form, so it's a string. You'd like that to become the name of the worksheet. Yeah, so you've got some data in a cell, you want to do this little con concatenation, and then the concatenated text string, and you're using the example of your name. So for me, it would be Chris Mortimer. You want the sheet to become, the name of the sheet to become that name. So the tab you've got at the bottom of the sheet, that would become um, a bit of data in a cell. This, this is what we're talking about. Now, this is a classic coding task, you see. Here we're talking about changing the properties of objects in, in Excel. Excel is made up of objects. Just to go a little bit into, into the, the programming language, uh, Excel consists of objects, and we can use VBA to change the properties of objects. For example, the, a cell is an object, and a property of a cell is the value in the cell. Many other properties too. The formatting of the cell um, is a property. Many other properties too. Now, another object in Excel is worksheets. The worksheets, yeah. So Andrew is talking about, I think, is talking about changing the worksheet name. So changing one of the properties of, of, of the worksheets, of, of the worksheet. Now, there's no, there's no formula to do this. Uh, you know, we couldn't use a formula in the, in, in the worksheet tab area. You know, that, that's simply not possible. So we'd have to put some code in there. And I imagine, Andrew, you'd, you'd, you'd want a button. And when you click that button, you'd like the name of the sheet to become this concatenated text. 
and this is entirely possible. So Andrew, if you want to send us your file, and if you could make it as clear as possible, and uh, make sure there's no sensitive data in the file as well, so maybe create a kind of mocked up example. Uh, if you can send us a file, and uh, info at tigersolutions.co.uk, you can go to the website to find the email address info at tigersolutions.co.uk send us that file because that is a good example of something we could do in the live stream tomorrow because it's going to involve some formulae some manipulation of data in the worksheet it's also going to involve some simple coding so this this sounds like some sounds very promising for the live stream. sounds very promising so Andrew let us know in the chat is that what you're trying to do does it make sense if so then think about sending us uh, the file in. yeah we're going to wind it down for tonight in a minute uh, andrew so just fire an email to info at tiger solutions at co.uk and uh, and get in touch with us that way for tomorrow um and if not maybe we can even if andrew doesn't get in touch with us um then maybe we can pick up some of those topics anyway yeah. tomorrow we'll see right folks what we're going to do now is bring this to a close now all 15 16 17 of you online 17 so much thanks um, it's weird to express how meaningful it is if you just have a few people watching who don't yeah. who don't go away, and we re we really appreciate it. And it's, and it's people who have interacted in the chats, uh, got involved. You know, special thanks to you, uh, Andrew. Good to see you. Just said yes, you'll you'll send us a file through. Uh, that's very good to hear. And yeah, we'll look out for that file. Uh, so that could be that could be the topic. Yeah, for the, for the live stream tomorrow, and hopefully that that might have inspired some other views. Because I don't know about you, Steve, but when I'm watching these things, I don't get involved in the chat. No, 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 no. Stay off the chat. So, but we want you not to stay off the chat. Yeah. We want to, you get get all in the chat. Hopefully, we might have inspired some people to you know to get get involved in in, in the chat. Yes, you know, it's just it's just you know when when we're making these videos, uh, you know we can see the views ticking over sometimes. We can see the comments and, yeah. and the likes and the dislikes. You know, but to actually have somebody get in touch, mm. uh, you know, that, that's, that's really motivational. Yep. Motivational for us. That's really awesome. So, guys, finally, um, tomorrow, 8 o'clock Central European Time, 5 o'clock for those in the UK, Pacific Time in the USA, 9 in the morning, um, Eastern Time, 12 midday. we are back online tackling Andrew's question. Anna, this has been great to spend the evening with you. Yep. Have a lovely awesome. night. Have a good weekend. And uh, this is uh, Steve and Chris from Tiger signing off. Sorry. We'll see you soon. Good night. Thank you very much. Bye.